Welcome to Auburn Community Television and this episode of Meet the Artist. Meet the Artist is supported by the North Auburn Artist to introduce artists in our local community. Today we are starting a series of interviews of artists who are participating in the Placer Art Studio Tour. To kick off this series, we are at the Southside Art Center here in downtown Auburn. Our first guest is the studio manager for the Art Center, Randy Rigg. Randy, I want to thank you so much for joining us today, and thank I'm you. looking forward to talking about the center with you. I will first start out by saying that, saying that I did call the center the Southside Art Center, and it is my understanding that the name has changed, and there's going to be some changes that come about to the center. But before we get into those changes, let's first talk a little bit about the center. Um, so if you could kind of give us some background, that would be great. Um. Well, the, the company Southside Art Center started, um, I think, over 30 years ago, and the mission has always been to support uh, adults with in intellectual disabilities um, in teaching them art skills and uh, allowing them to explore their own creativity and uh, develop um, at their own pace. And, uh, you know, so it has a long history of that. Um, the company did branch out in many different ways along the, along the way. Um, now there's many divisions to Southside. Um, what we're focusing on today is Southside Unlimited Work of Art. Um, and that is the studio side of the company that still provides those services uh, to individuals who have intellectual disabilities. Now the facility that we're in today is both the studio for where the artists come and create their artwork, but it also contains a gallery. Right. And in that gallery, we, you always are showing some of the artwork from the artists that are participating mm -hmm. in the center. Yeah, um, the, the focus of our program is more the development side of, of allowing the individuals to explore their own creativity, to become better artists, to teach them skills, uh, but also to teach them how to market their art and to show it. Um, we're more of a studio than we are a gallery, so the, the gallery here is fairly small, um, but it is a, a, an opportunity for them to show their art. Um, we also focus on other opportunities um, within the community for them to show their art. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the gallery is a, is a great part. It's really kind of their, um, their reward for doing a great job. Now I noticed that most of the art that is around us is the hanging art, the paintings, but they also do sculptures and other type of artwork here. Mm -hmm. What else can would we find if we came and looked at the studio and watched the artists at work? Well, on any given day, um, each artist will be working on a medium of their choice. We have a ceramic studio uh, with the potter's wheel and kiln, um, so they'll be doing sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, recently, uh, we did a whole series of paper mache, um, which can be a really incredible art form in itself. Um, we have fabric arts, we have sewing machines, we have uh, staff who is capable of teaching artists to knit. Um, just about anything any artist would want to pursue, we're here to support them in that. Now, do you have um, staff artists that are teaching these various forms of art? Or do you have people from the community that come in and volunteer? So well, how does that work? It's all staff. Um, as the manager of the studio, I am a fine artist. Um, my teacher, or my art instructor, is a graduate of art school focusing on a career in art instruction. Our art aides are both very capable artists uh, with different skills of their own. One of my art aides is a fabric artist and a um, sewer, and she is you know, really capable of teaching knitting. Our other artist is a, uh, an excellent and your other art aid, excuse me, is an excellent um, like drawing and painting instructor. So we, we use people's skills to and focus it where it um, comes in pretty handy. Now do you find that having this outlet for the artist helps them in furthering their advancement in the um, community, uh, communicating with other people or other skills that this may be teaching them? Absolutely. Um, 
it's an opportunity for them to come and, and just become better artists. And that's our focus is to, uh, you know, to support them in that individuality. Um, oftentimes the, the population we serve doesn't have the opportunity. The way society has kind of viewed them um, has actually hindered their ability to become independent. Um, we don't look at them as, as disabled. We, we just meet each person where they're at and give them every opportunity to um, to succeed at whatever level they're able. Now, how did the artist come to you? Um, well, right now we are our our artists are supported by Alta Regional Center. Um, they fund uh, the artists to to participate here, um, and that's been the the history of of Southside Art Center. Um, but there are changes that you alluded to in the introduction here, um, whereby the surfaces are going to be provided more in a more natural setting. So our um, studio is focused on growth into the type of studio that serves the entire community. And the population that's here right now will just integrate, um, the community will integrate with them. And uh, in a perfect world, you wouldn't you know, you wouldn't differentiate between uh, a person with an intellectual disability or just somebody from the community who wants to come and explore their own creativity. So, so that change, mm -hmm. bringing the community more into the center, do you have any idea how that's going to work at this point? It's in the, the beginning stages. The seeds are planted. There are, you know, there's legislation in place that kind of mandates this. But they've been pushing, pushing back uh, implementation of it. Um, so it's hard to say. I think 2020 is the soonest that they'll start um, taking a look at that is from a legal standpoint, um, maybe even 2022. But eventually we will be evaluated upon the way in which our services are provided uh, based on those mandates. So I indicated that the name of Southside Art Center has changed. Exactly. And what is it called now? Well, the art part of it is called Work of Art. So officially we are Southside Unlimited Work of Art, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, is exactly what it says. So, yes. you know, the other divisions of Southside have their own names, you know, such as Passage or um, Employment, but we're, we're Work of Art. That's how we're going to be known. Are we going to be seeing the name on the building changing as well? Exactly, yes. The, um, actually, signage is underway uh, for our new, our new branding and uh, a big launch, um, hopefully before the holidays. So I hope that if you're going to come and see people mm -hmm. here at the Art Center, that you'll recognize that Southside Art Center is going to be work of art. It is the same type of center. They are expanding to meet the needs of the community as a whole. Uh, which I think is going to be a great asset for the artists that are here as well. Yeah. Well, now you had mentioned that uh, you do have an art instructor here, mm -hmm. instructor here, um, and we're going to talk to him next. Great. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you for joining us again for our next guest, who is Franco Rosgado. Franco is an instructor here at the Southside Art Center. And he is also an artist in his own right. So we're going to talk a little bit about his experiences here at the center, show some of his own art, and also talk about how he is liaisoning with Placer Art Studio Tour. Franco, I'm so glad you could join us. I'm, I'm glad to be here. All right, so let's start out with um, what you do here at the center. Um, so my job here, I am an art instructor. Um, but as well, I'm, my job is to help facilitate them being uh, professional artists. So training them in materials that they desire, or uh, experimentation with different materials, and then on top of that, exposing them into different markets. Mm -hmm. I did notice when I walked around the studio that uh, they are working on actual canvases. And they are working with um, the same type of mediums that we see everyone working with out there in the art world? Yes. Um, we made a big push for uh, professional mediums. Um, 
we just within the past year we've started working with oil paints um, and as well for those who wanted to try new and exciting materials we'll go out purchase it and then we'll experiment until it works mm -hmm. so are you learning a lot from this process as well yes um, just in teaching alone because my ultimate goal is to be a teacher I have learned vast amounts of information that I probably would not have gotten anywhere else. Um, a lot of communication skills and learning that all of my participants, every learning experience for them is individualized. I have to learn all the different languages that they speak. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, that helps me recognize that everybody has a language that they speak, especially in art. So you think that are finding that their art as a form of communication is varying based on what they bring to that piece. Yes. Um, in fact, since we've started shifting our focus and we've seen their collections of work get bigger, and once they're up on the walls, we can start to see the personalities start to unfold. So for me, it's very easy for, to pick up on who did what painting. And, um, you know, in the, in the gallery right now, in the uh, studio, there's the sections, you can see the lines where one artist ends and one artist begins, very distinctly. Well, it is because it's so individualized, and you do see that. Mm -hmm. And what struck me, too, this isn't about just keeping somebody busy. This, these are artists who are expressing who they are through different mediums. Yeah. And... That was one of the culture shifts we wanted, was to peel away from having people here for crafts, and we tapped into their desires of being an artist. Um, and that's what we've seen, is those who really want to be out in the world, known for their art, they produced vast amounts of art within just the past year. Mm -hmm. Well, I also, I like the fact that they can change mediums. Mm -hmm. uh, the other day when I was here, Lindsay, who has been doing a lot of uh, painting, has, she said, taken a break from painting. Yeah. And she was able to do something else because that's offered here. Yes. Um, we try to be as all-encompassing as we can be. Um, and also acknowledging that Whatever work you're doing, you're going to need a break sooner or later. Lindsay was on a uh, period of painting for maybe five months straight. And just lately she started knitting. And we've been supporting her in pursuing her knitting. Mm -hmm. So by this point she's already made like five, six different hats. And then just working on several other projects. Um, all the while still thinking about what she wants to do for her next painting project. Oh, there's no question she's going to come back to painting. Oh, absolutely. And on top of that, uh, whenever we start talking about new projects, she sometimes will throw out there, I want to work with this uh, material. Uh, lately it's been foam. Mm -hmm. So right now we're formulating a plan on what we want to do for a 5x3 painting um, and how we can include foam into that as well as other props and other mediums found objects. Well I have to admit I'm somewhat jealous of these artists here and what they have is open up to them because when I was taking art we would have six weeks of oil, we would do mm -hmm. six weeks of watercolor and then we would do six weeks of ceramics um, and we never ever moved from one medium to other as we wanted to do. It was what was on that schedule. And that's a, a great amount of freedom that these artists are given. Yeah, and that was my experience too. And I actually, what I learned from my schooling was I didn't like that. And, <laughs> and I, I recognized that in order to be a better teacher, what I should be doing is listening to my students. And them telling me I'm interested in a new material. All right, well, let's jump on it. Let's try it. And the growth that I've seen from that, just experimenting, having fun, 
and trying new things has been you're inspiring. Just, you're just going with the flow. Yeah, and I have to say, sometimes the flow is steady and nice and neat, and then other times it gets rough because everybody wants to try something different. And I have to, like, okay, let me learn that real quick, and then I'll teach you what I know. Yes. Um, but it's a beautiful process. I learn, they learn, and between us both, we all, or between all the students, we, we grow. Well, I think art is a way that gives free reign to what is internalized in an individual. Mm -hmm. So this type of environment just seems to further that freedom that they can get from their art. Yeah, and you know, when it comes down to the expression, too, we, we've been trying to talk with them and tr uh, train them on how to see paintings and how to talk about them. Uh, I, I ask three basic questions. What do you see? Why do you see that? And what does it make you feel? And I've already seen major differences in their like oh, learning process. Mm -hmm. um, and how they talk about it after that point. It, it, they sound and speak like a, an artist, a mm -hmm. professional artist. And I absolutely love this. So let's go into, because you do have your own art. Yes. And uh, let's talk a little bit about um, your art, you have brought some pieces that are in what medium? Uh, these are oil paints. Um, well, this one's oil. Uh, I call this one a Chill of a Bissell Heart. And in my art, I mostly paint and draw and sculpt monsters. Uh, I'm, I'm a person living with depression and anxiety. And so the way that I express it, the way I get it out of my system, is I use these monsters as uh, physical um, depictions. Mm -hmm. And so it's like trapping something for me. And you've actually captured them on here. Mm -hmm. And so in that way, you've kind of released them from yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and we can all go home and have nightmares. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we have another piece, yeah, which is kind of along the same lines. Yeah, and this one's uh, Abyssal Heart's Gaze. The, these are similar, uh, or these are the same kind of monster for mm -hmm. me. Um, this is the, They are meant to express uh, kind of creeping thoughts um, and observation. Mm -hmm. um, to kind of like an omniscient being. And that's how sometimes I feel about my depression. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, yeah, capturing them on a canvas really alleviates what, what I end up feeling. You know, and by sharing this with the viewer, it gives us a little bit more insight. I, unfortunately, I do not suffer from depression, but this does give me a much better idea of what it is like for someone who's going through that. So that is how art actually helps me in learning more about you and therefore furthering our communications. Yeah, and... For me, with painting this and expressing myself this way, it also, if this is how I express myself, I also recognize too others recognize uh, others express themselves in this kind of the same way. So, and then all it is is just the imagery changes. And, um, so the same feelings that I see with all my participants and what their experiences are, they're just done in different ways, and it. it being so open about this for myself allows me to actually open up and communicate a little bit better with who I teach. Now when you're teaching the students here, are you communicating what these pictures, these, this artwork is saying about you? Yes. So they uh, can get that sense of you and how mm -hmm. you're putting it on the canvas. Yeah. And as well, I, I still ask those three questions at the, before I give them what my, uh, what my answer was. Because I love hearing what they see mm -hmm. and what they feel from it. Um, so, so far, it's actually been a nice experience, a nice exchange when we talk about art together. Now, you are also, we're going to segue into the Placer Art Studio okay. Tour because the Art Center here is going to be open through the tour. It is one of the stops. Yes. Um, and there will be work that is on display here in the gallery. 
are uh, people going to be able to go through the studio as well and meet the artists? Absolutely. And they're going to be present for all three days? Um, our studio tour artists will be here for all three days, and this, with the studio being open on Friday, every artist will be here. So that's going to be a fabulous experience for the artist as well as the community. Exactly. So by being a liaison with the Placer Arts Studio Tours, what exactly are you doing in helping these artists get ready? Um, the first task that we had to do was to create a body of work. And so those who signed on had the task of pushing for multiple pieces. Um, and so far, we've, we've hit that goal. Uh, the second part was to get them into as many shows as we possibly could. Any preview shows that the studio tour was having, um, fairs that were occurring at least nearby, mm -hmm. um, that was our secondary goal get them in as many as we could. And so far we've been in about four since we signed on for the tour. Actually five. Um, and finally it's just going to be um, showing off in November and having everybody here ready to talk about what they do. Which is the next step in it. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just recently at the Gold Com uh, Country Fairgrounds, and I did see some of the work of the artists here at the fairgrounds. Oh, okay, good. And also got to talk with some of the artists because they did come in through uh, during the fair. Um, and you can tell the pride and joy they have in seeing their artwork display. Yes. It, it brings me pride when I see how happy and proud they are. Um, especially knowing that their artwork is hanging professionally in a space um, that makes me just ecstatic for them. So if people want to get in contact with you about your artwork, well, how is the best way for them to get in contact? Uh, the best way to get in contact with me about my artwork is to go on Facebook, look up Monster Minded Media, or Instagram at Monster Minded under, under dash, uh, Media. And of course, you can always come by the studio here because you're here almost every day. Yes. Um, I am here Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. So that gives you an opportunity to see Franco's work as well as to see the work of the other artists that are here in the studio. Now the next treat we have, we are actually going to interview some of the artists that are here at the center. And I've asked Franco to stay with us uh, because he is working with each one of the artists. So stay tuned for more interviews. We are meeting with one of the artists here at the Southside Art Center, and this is Chris Franzi. Chris does incredible oil and acrylic paintings, and I'm so thrilled that we get to talk with you today, Chris. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you're welcome. So we have four pieces of work that you have are going mm -hmm. to be having in mm -hmm. the Placer Art Studio Tour. Mm -hmm. and. We have three of them on the wall here. So maybe we can talk a little bit about these. Um, now, I understand that you primarily work with acrylic, mm -hmm. and it is probably your medium of choice. Yeah. Uh, what is it you like about acrylic? Um, you can, well, um, you can take it off your clothes, for one. <laughs> that makes it very, very <laughs> easy. This is true. Um, uh, you can, um, you know, if you make a mistake, you can easily erase it. So how do you go about erasing it? Uh, you can take a, a damp cloth and just go over the paint and uh, take it off. And, uh, and then put on some other paint to, and uh, do it that way. You know what I always liked about acrylics too is because they dry faster. And I can move yeah. from one section yeah. to the other. Yeah. Um, now, you seem to, from looking at your work too, you are able to do a lot of blending even though you're working with acrylic. Mm -hmm. um, I love your use of colors. Uh -huh. So, one of the one that draws my eye instantly is this beautiful mm -hmm. painting. And can you tell us a little bit about this particular painting? Um, what is it showing? It's showing the waterfall. That uh, I had pictured in my mind, um, 
and then the uh, colors, um, the green bushes, um, which goes along with the, the uh, waterfall and the um, sunrise. I love that. I love the golden colors here. Uh -huh. And is this an acrylic painting? No, it's water. Okay, I was going to say that this, with the blendings that mm -hmm. you've been able to achieve, yeah. it's very beautiful how you have the colors that move to uh -huh. one to another. Yeah. Um, it is certainly beautiful. The painting that we have above it, um, so tell me what you see in this particular painting and you're conveying through this painting. Oh, when I pictured it in my mind, uh, I pictured Alaska, you know, uh, with the um, covered snow drifts, mm -hmm. and this is what uh, I wanted to express my picture. So this is almost like with the mountains that we're mm -hmm. seeing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, with the uh, jagged edges and snow. And I love the fact that this is just all coming from within you, and you're putting this on the canvas. Yeah. It really does allow us to share a part of you in this painting. Oh, yeah, yeah. So let's go to this one as well, and can you tell me what medium this is in? Or is this oil or is this acrylic? No, this is also oil. It's acrylic. Oh, it's acrylic? Yeah, it's acrylic. Oh. Well, then I'm, I'm very impressed that it's acrylic. Huh. So let's, um, because I could see this as in terms of oil. So tell me about this particular painting, because it just draws you in. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't really have too much in mind, um, um, but the first thing that I did have is a cave kind of, with a curve, mm -hmm. and then the water going through, um, and then um, these look like little mountains inside, um, and then the water going all the way back on the sides. And, uh, um, you know, um, kind of <laughs> remind. Reminds me of the ride at Disneyland, you know, parts of the okay, Caribbean. Caribbean. Yeah. Okay, Caribbean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes, I can see that in it. Yeah. But you know, right. also what I see in it is I went down to the Cancun area in Mexico and they have these oh, underground caves. Oh, yes, yes. And you snorkel through these right. caves. And I'll tell you, as yeah. soon as I saw it, yeah. that's where I say it draws you in and you see the fluidity yeah. of this particular yes. picture. Yeah. You have beautifully depicted that. Oh, well, you know, yeah, yeah. Isn't that called Blue Grotto or something? Yes. No. It's actually, and you, it's you've depicted it perfectly, mm -hmm. and you weren't even in my head. <laughs> All right. So we have one other picture, and it is actually on the column, and we've taken the photo of it. And I understand this this painting actually has a name. Do you, do you remember what the name of the smaller? Um, painting is. Maybe Franco can help us out with that. Yeah, it's uh, a stormy night. So does that strike up a chord mm -hmm. for you, storm, yeah. stormy yeah. night? Mm -hmm. I think the colors that you've used in it are absolutely amazing. Um, and it just demonstrates that even though it's small, mm -hmm. it can still carry mm -hmm. a lot of punch. Mm -hmm. So tell me about what you were thinking when you were painting Stormy Night. Um. And lots of action, you know, um, uh, thunder, kind of lightning, um, tree, um, black hills, uh, yeah, um, just a lot of uh, activity going on. And, uh, and you have been able to capture that in that very yeah, small image. Yeah, yeah. You know, I thank you very much for sharing your time with us today as well as your art. Mm -hmm. It has been a joy to see your artwork but also to learn what you were thinking about mm -hmm. when you were painting each one of these. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Our next guest is Ryan Hack. 
Ryan has done some absolutely amazing, amazing work here, and I am absolutely thrilled to introduce him and share his artwork with you. Ryan, thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So let's look at this wonderful painting because it really dominates a room when you walk into it. Um, first off is what is the medium that you used in this painting? This was actually just acrylic that is specifically designed to throw and splash all over the place instead of just using paintbrushes. Now when you first started this, did you paint a solid layer and then did the throwing process or did was there some blending that went on after you throw the painting? I'm not familiar with this process, so if you could walk me through it. Well, this is something I was just doing at random because I've seen it done before. Mm -hmm. It's when um, people just really want to get their emotions out and kind of just go for it. And so I decided to just go ahead and splash some color, just throw it, literally throw it and splash with the paintbrush and whatever just made me feel good in the moment. So when you're doing this is that you're actually feeling something very emotional and you're putting that on this canvas. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at this we can see that um, just incredible process that's going on with you in handling various things. I love your color choices too. So did the, does the white depict anything specific here? No, just random colors. Just random yeah. colors. Well, I absolutely love it. And also it's kind of interesting is that I, I, I'm drawn to this because this actually has the movement almost like a comb, it looks like. But that it was also achieved through just throwing the paint onto the canvas? Yeah, and then I had to keep swiping and then I eventually came up with some patterns half randomly. So now when you were doing it, was it like this, this um, in this vertical position? Or did you actually move it around a little bit? In the uh, yeah, we did various uh, positions. So at one part, I put the purple over and then I flipped it yeah. on its side and then I did the uh, yellow and blue and then flipped it over on that side and then did the green down here. Now when you're going through this process and you're throwing the paint on it as you move the canvas, does that promote it to run too? Is that yes, like what's going it on? actually when you throw it, it drips down on, on its own. Boy, this must be an incredible mess when you guys go through and start doing this process. There's an entire area that we specifically designed to to do it, this yeah. work. I've never done this. I would love to. This is, sounds like it's quite fun and such a relief too to be able just to come and here it is. Mm -hmm. So let's move on because we have some other of your work and I have to say is I think one of your most striking pieces of work is this piece and what do you call this? Just the man because uh, the staff Randy he just picked some random guy off the internet and say all right I start painting him. I was wondering if he was someone you knew, so it no. was just someone that you saw and then you Just went some ahead. random person off the internet that Randy took a picture of and then he had blurred pictures mm -hmm. which shows the steps for transitioning from white to black to oh, gray tones and he had me do it in steps and he said, all right, now we're not going to move you to the next step until you make the picture look exactly like this in this photo. And then by the time that painstaking process was all done, we decided the, to do overlay. And what is the uh, overlay then? When you say you do the overlay, what is that? The overlay with color. It's, oh, okay. called, it's gotcha. called glaze. And with the glaze. So this is originally black and white and monochrome. Oh, I see. And colors. so you came in and you added a little bit of a golden to take at his beard and you really accented his teeth here, which, I, by the way, the teeth are fabulous. Thank you. Teeth are very, very hard to paint. Mm -hmm. So I do. This is an incredible piece. Uh, the one above it, uh, what do you call this particular piece? Now, this meant a contrast. Because you now this is a really good teaching mechanism right here, because um, orange and blue 
green, red, purple, yellow. Those are all the contrasting colors. So that's why the man of contrast. Yes. And again, it's like, was this an image that you had in your head um, when you were painting this, or were you using something similar to this process? No, I originally wanted to uh, take a, a photo of myself, my hand out, but then because I was so inexperienced at the time with painting, I just turned it into this. <laughs> well, and then you end up with this amazing colors that you have brought to this particular painting. Now, was the, were these two paintings more difficult for you than some of, let's say, like your the forest that you have here or this painting? Here? No, believe it or not, um, these were actually just self-guided. Mm -hmm. And these three, we'll get to this one in a minute, but this was me learning how to follow specific instructions. Mm -hmm which I need those skills to learn. To, to follow through those instructions. Yeah. Now maybe you can kind of explain why that is important for you to learn as you're going through this art process. Well just like with this um, painting right here and this painting and this painting, um, for, for learning the reason why it's important to me is because of, as you know with this program, I also have a high functioning autism and so I wanted to find something that will help me to be the best person that I can be and I knew that art was one of those things either visual or performing arts and I've already tried performing arts <laughs> that didn't work so I try visual arts mm -hmm. And as it turns out, that it's a real connection. It's a real connection for me because it's something that people all across the spectrum are good at doing. Mm -hmm. you hold that that in common. And so, art is a real treatment. Now, when you're doing it, because I know that one of the things that we talked about is that because sometimes you become incredibly focused, mm -hmm. and so having to go through these steps, step by step, did that help you move out of just focusing in too much because you had to do each one of those steps? Yes, it did, because originally I came into the art program with overanalyzing the details too much. Mm -hmm. And that's part of my disability is that I focus too much on detail, not the whole picture. I have to take it one step at a time. And once I get learned to stop focusing on that and just focus on the big picture, I started to actually develop in the area of the brain regarding um, social skills, mm -hmm. things that people with autism are at a real disadvantage. And so I actually learned how to start doing that over time. I've still got work to do, but I'm really coming along. And you think this program has really yes. helped you in that? Well, you know, as we talked before, you were mentioning that there are a lot of great artists who are probably somewhere on the autism spectrum. Um, yes, because my dad is an art hist or the, uh, a history teacher, mm -hmm. not specifically art, but history in general. And... He was always telling me just enjoy life, you know, once I got out of high school and then even out of college, just tr take your time trying to find the job that is good for you. And all of a sudden I get into this art program and he's like, hey, get to work, get to work, doing this, do that. And he's like, okay, what is with, what happened with just relaxing? What happened with that? And then that's when he told me why he's on me so much is because... Art is such a connecting piece to the community. It's not only the glue that holds people together, which with people with autism, they need to find common ground that they can um, have with other people. But even in history, they're saying that, I don't know where the source is, but I'll find it, but they are finding out nowadays, according to what we consider to be get autism, the most fam one of the most famous artists, popular artists, 
Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Rembrandt, they were all on the spectrum. They all had autism as we know it. And they were able then to use their art yeah. as a means by which to communicate with the rest of the world. And to, to really form a common ground and even form relationships. Absolutely. Professional and friendly. It's a way that we can join together. Mm -hmm. So let's go to your next picture, um, your painting. So this so one I decided to do all on my own. This was a real interesting way that it came out. This is why I call it Russian Forest. Because I was re let, re um, listening to a Russian band. And just like with the splashing of the painting, mm -hmm. I decided to just splash to the music. I just went like this. And by the time I was done with it, just going up and down, I took a step back and I think, huh, you know what, those look like trees. Oh, you know what, this, these spaces right here could be rocks. And I see a path going down. And I just, I just kept going. I just kept going at it. And it's, it's actually, you know, that's what's the beauty of doing the art. And is sometimes when you do step away, you even find that part of you that you're trying to express was there and you just didn't even know it until you took that moment mm -hmm. and then you saw it so that's actually incredible it also looks like that this is kind of depicting crossroads and having to make some type of a decision yes because that's just the reality in life uh, you're in a forest it's beautiful as it is your surroundings are but you're still having to get to a decision that's going to be positive and beautiful. Mm -hmm. you're in this, it's beautiful because you're still in the process of getting to the right decision, but you got to get to the other side first. Yes. So you're going through the woods still, so to speak, and you see light on the other side, but you're focusing straight ahead. Unfortunately, you've got multiple decisions and ways to go. This one's going to lead you directly to an obstacle. This place is going to lead you wherever. You don't even know. Mm -hmm. But only this is going to lead straight ahead to the right decision. And that's where you're depicting here with the white, is this is kind of that hope, possibly. That yeah, you're that's the beautiful thing through. behind it that you're trying to get to. Get to. Yeah. This is what I absolutely love about art, because it allows me to see what your vision was and then I can bring a part of my experiences to it as well and that's where's the common ground you're talking about yes shared experiences well Ryan I want to thank you so much for sharing your artwork with us today thank you very much and talking with us and I as I said I think your work is absolutely brilliant and I'm looking forward to seeing more of it thank you very much thanks have a good day uh -huh. our next guest is Lindsay Platts Lindsay also works in various oils and acrylics, but she is, has a special technique that we're going to be talking about today, which actually creates a sculpture in some of her work. Our first piece, however, is going to be this incredible piece that is behind us. And Lindsay, let's take a moment and talk about the technique and what you use in creating this great piece. Um, well, I definitely most mostly with this project, I basically most the different techniques and I also moved the brush strokes on this piece and then with the yellow I also moved the toothbrush for the splattering and then we also moved different colors for it for the background and then from the black we did a wash background and this is done with this is number pastel. So we're basically looking at multiple layers mm -hmm. in creating this particular piece. And you started out with a solid color in the back. Mm -hmm. And what color was that? Um, well, first we started with orange, and then we went to blue, and then purple, and then yellow. And then we added some light colors, and um, kind of dark colors, so it wasn't too dark or too light. 
Um, this piece actually, I actually spent three months on this piece. I can see it because of the many steps that you would be taking. Mm -hmm. um, and was there a great deal of time between the different layers that you're doing in terms of drying? Um, well, I mostly lay out my plan before I actually start painting. And then I'll have an idea what it, looks, what it will turn out and what it will look like when it's actually done. Now, did I hear you correct that you said that when you did this splash on it, you used a toothbrush? Yes, I used a toothbrush. It was the old toothbrush I used, and then they, and then we had it standing up on the wall, and I did most of it on the paintbrush, too. Mm -hmm. So you just basically dipped those in, and then you started splattering mm -hmm. along. Now, we're seeing it in this horizontal position that it is here. When you were working with it, were you moving it around as well? Only when we had to do the, the, the last part of the, the yellow, what I had to do with that is we had to lay on the floor to order to put the yellow on with the toothbrush. Mm -hmm. Because if we had it on the wall, that would be a little bit challenging. So, um, I think with this one, it had to be moved around because we had to try different techniques for it. You know, I love the way that you can see the orange that you were talking about and the blues. And you see those little pieces of it as you come in and visually look at this. It's a beautiful painting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now let's go to the technique where you're actually building on the painting to create a texture to it. And would you hold up this one and what do you call this one? This one is the snake also done out of foam. Um, and then he actually, I had this in the Gold Country Fair and he got first place for it. For this, and then once I would lay the foam out on the canvas, I actually had to move some paper mold to get it to stay on the foam, and then I would just the snake part before I actually painted it, and then I also did the background with the toothbrush with the white. I just love it when you can use just things that are in your home as your tool and mm -hmm. what you can create by them. Well, let's go. We have actually a foam that is in the process, so we can explain how we build up this foam. There we go. Now, and this one is a kind of process we had. I have to use the same paper mold for the snake and then. And then the next part is we would just load the snake part before we paint it and then we would do the background for it. Um, I'm hoping this will be done for the next Art Studios tour in November and then we can have an idea for other people to see how we did this piece and they can the texture and the layer on it. So that's great because then people who are viewing this will be able to see it at this step and then in a couple months we'll get to see it completed. Yeah, I really hope so. Now you can see through this because the foam is actually a yellow foam. Yes. We try, we always can lose the one color because if we lose different colors, I just found out it won't stay on very well. So we lose the, only the one color, and I, I think with this one, it may be two, two layers of bone because it's a big piece, mm -hmm. and it's in progress. Now, then what do you put over the foam? What, is the, what are we seeing on top? Is this the paper that you're mm -hmm. talking about? And is, is that like um, you wet it with something? Yeah, we would, what we do is we would mix it with water. You have to make sure it's mixed real good with water. Because if not, then it will, it will turn out all, all lumpy. 
what we're trying to get it at to be all soupy so we can have some way on here. Well, again, I can't wait to see the finished piece on this one. Now we're going to go to your next piece of work, which actually is more of using this foam process, and mm -hmm. it's just using it in a smaller. And this one, I think we have to first start out is, what is this one called? That one is guts, because of the color we use for it, and then how it, how the, how the foam turned out to be on the bottom. So on um, this one, the with the reddish color that you used, did you go over your canvas first with the red? Because I know you said that you I actually put on this the one. foam on first. It I oh. turn it turns out to do the background first before you actually layer the foam on, and then um and then how I did that I would also did some splatterings in the background and then we also I also painted over the foam pieces on that piece. Now how did you create these very very small pieces out of uh, that well foam? we we have a setting on the tube on the tube where where it will come out really small and that's what we were hoping for. So that was my first project. We wanted to come out come up with a little a little smaller before I started this one. Now did you know going in that you were gonna be doing a painting that would ultimately be guts or is that something after you saw No, the it was just after I saw the colors on it and then the backgrounds. And then um and then I also painted the canvas in the background too with the foam on top of it. Yeah, I see that that you have done that. And so now this is using acrylic paint that you use? Yes, this is all all these three are done with acrylics. I think if we use oil, I think I never tried it with oil, but it might take longer to dry because losing the oil it kind of takes up to five days for it to dry. Yeah, I think that that would really interfere with what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a medium that suits your work very well. So the last time I was here, I understand that you're taking a little bit of a hiatus from the painting, mm -hmm. but I certainly hope that you get back to it because you're I'm real, um, I'm, I am going to be working on another poem project. It's going to be kind of like a Halloween thing. Um, and that will be done with foam, and then um, we'll add some stalls in the background, and then I would add the haunted house in the background. Well, I think you could put this one up at Halloween too. <laughs> yes. All right, I want to thank you so much for your time and sharing You're your welcome. art with us. This has been a joy, and I can't wait to see this finished product in November. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I really want to thank the staff and the artists here today that have taken the time to talk with us about their art and to share with us the art and this program. Art is about communicating. A little piece of an artist goes with every single piece of art that they create. They are putting their feelings and their experiences into that art and they are sharing it with you. That is their way of communicating. The Placer Art Studio Tour is a wonderful opportunity for you to go and meet the artist here at this studio as well as other artists throughout Placer County. You will get to meet them, you will get to see their art, and they will get to communicate with you and share what their visions are. And maybe in turn, you will also be able to share the experiences you have in viewing their art. I hope that you will schedule the Placer Art Studio Tour on your calendar for the second weekend in November. I also hope that you will tune in again to Auburn Community Television and meet the artists. All you have to do is tune in to Wave Channel 20 or you can find us on YouTube. Who knows, either through the tour or through this show, you may find that you have an artist living just around the corner or just perhaps there's an artist within you. Mm -hmm.